it helps in motility, it maintains the shape of the cell. So, what are the normal functions of skeleton? The same way, this filaments within the cytoplasm. <laughs>
intermediate filaments are also present, but they are simply scattered, like they do not have any particular uh, location or something, they are just scattered within the cytoplasm. But microtubules and microfilaments, they are the main parts of this cytoskeleton. So, microtubules, these are hollow structures, okay, they are hollow structures, whereas microfilaments, they are solid structures, okay, they are solid, hollow you know, there is a space inside, while uh, solid means you do not have a space inside, okay. So, microtubules, they are hollow structures, whereas microfilaments, they are solid. So, if you draw a microtubule, microtubule can be like this, it is hollow, okay. And this microtubule is actually made up of, see all are proteinaceous structures only, okay, all are pro made up of protein. That is why it is called proteinaceous structures, okay. So, this is the microtubule, all right. And here you have the microfilament, which is a solid structure. See, did you understand there is a space, like you have a gap inside, okay. But here it is solid, you do not have any gap inside. Okay, it is okay. There is no space, nothing. It's a solid substance. Okay, solid filament. Okay. Yes. So this is solid, and this is hollow. And this microtubule, it is made up of tubulin protein. The protein with which micro tubules are made that is tubulin protein and here microfilaments are made up of actin and myosin protein, okay, actin and myosin. So, microtubules are made up of tubulin protein while microfilaments are made up of actin and myosin protein. See, these are the proteins with which this microtubules and microfilaments are made. Okay, then let us say the location where you can see this microtubules. Microtubules generally you can see in the cilia, okay, flagella, then you can see them in the centrioles, okay, in the centriole you can see, then in the basal body, basal body you can see. Okay. Yes. So, microtubules are generally found within the cilia, flagella, the centriole, basal body and you can see this microtubule in the sperm tail also. Okay. So, we can write axonym, axonym of sperm tail. Okay. So, microtubules Yes, microtubules are found in the cilia, flagella, centrioles, basal body and the axonym, the central axis of sperm tail. And microfilaments, you can see them in the cytoplasm, okay. You can see them in the microvilli. Microvilli, where do you find this microvilli? Microvilli, you can see them, okay. Like in the intestine, you have this microvilli, no? small finger like structures. Yes. So, in the cytoplasm, microvilli, and also in the muscles, you can see this microfilaments. So, this is a simple differentiation between microtubules and microfilaments, which are a part of the cytoskeleton. I hope it is clear. Okay. And along with this, you have intermediate filaments. Here, you have a nice image of this. Okay. This is actually a cell and the cytoskeleton actually forms a structure like this, a supporting uh, structure. In this, you can see the intermediate filaments. See here you have the intermediate filaments, okay, these are the intermediate filaments, okay, yes, 
intermediate filaments actually it forms like a network network to hold other filaments and all okay yes so that is intermediate filament again these are made up of proteins all these filaments and tubules they are made up of proteins so the entire cytoskeleton it is uh, cytoskeletal structures are made up of proteins only and in microtubules you have tubulin protein while in microfilaments you have what kind of protein actin and myosin yes and here is a microtubule as you can see microtubules are this okay these are the mic microtubules which you can see okay and see these are hollow structures they are hollow structures micro tubules inside see there is a space inside around this you have this globular proteins you have the globular proteins arranged like this on the surface and inside you have actually a space there is a space inside okay yes and that is microtubule which is made up of tubulin protein and you have the microfilament here it is actin filament also you the filament which is made up of actin actin filament and you have myosin also so here you can see this microfilament which is actually made up of actin protein also there are myosin filaments made up of myosin protein okay so i hope this uh, brief idea about cytoskeleton you have now right yes now we shall see cilia and flagella so cilia and flagella you know they are the locomotory structures which you can see in organisms okay cilia um you can say in paramecium you have the cilia flagella okay this organism is the euglenoid right so this is the paramecium paramecium where you can see the cilia okay and this is the euglena where you can see the flagella this is the flagella so these are locomotory structures okay locomotory structures that you see in organisms eukaryotic organisms in prokaryotes also you have this flagella okay but the structure is different do you remember when we learned prokaryotic cell organization okay we learned about the structure of flagella which has this basal body hook and filament so that is totally a different structure okay in eukaryotes our cilia and flagella they are made up of they are made up of which cytoskeleton okay they are made up of microtubules and microtubules are made up of which protein tubulin protein okay so cilia it's actually the plural word the singular form is cilium flagella is again the plural word the singular form is flagellum they are simply the outgrowths of the cell membrane okay from the membrane you have extensions that is cilia and flagella see here in the cell in paramecium from the entire the entire cell membrane has got this outgrowth that is cilia in euglena see only one structure there is no numerous flagella just one flagella arising as an extension of the cell membrane yes so these are simply hair like outgrowths of the from the cell membrane and what is actually the function they actually give a beating movement okay cilia it just beat so that the organism can move or the surrounding in which they are like if they are in a fluid they can move the fluid okay that is the function of cilia flagella when it beats okay the organism will be moving so cilia moves the organism help in the locomotion of organism as well as it can move the uh, the surrounding fluid okay and flagella it helps in movement of the body of the organism got it yes and now you if you differentiate between the cilia and flagella cilia you can see many numbers the entire cell is actually covered by this cilia many numbers are there and it is shorter right it's not too long it is quite short compared to flagella see flagella in a cell you can see 
with single single flagella say and it's quite long compared to cilia it is longer so these are the basic difference between cilia and flagella and uh, as we said in prokaryotic bacteria this structure is quite different structure of flagella so now we will be seeing the structure of cilia the internal structure of cilium or flagellum so you know they are made up of microtubules so the arrangement of microtubules in a cilium or flagellum is like this so this is actually the electron microscopic image okay electron microscopic image of the cross section of cilia or flagella okay and this is actually a diagrammatic representation of the same see this is the electron microscopic view and here we have a colorful diagrammatic representation and this is actually the microtubules only okay microtubules arranged in a different form okay yes so here in cilia or flagella their cross section would be like this and the arrangement of microtubules the entire thing is actually covered with a plasma membrane okay you can see a plasma membrane covering for this structure okay there is plasma membrane covering and now let's see how the microtubules in this are arranged there are outer there is an outer layer of microtubules we call it as peripheral peripheral means surface that is peripheral microtubules on the surface okay outer outer layer microtubules they are arranged as doublets two microtubules together so this is one microtubule this is another microtubule so two microtubules are arranged together so we call that doublet so how many doublets are there okay one one two three four five six seven eight nine doublets are there okay you can see nine peripheral microtubules which are in the form of doublets okay nine microtubules and they are doublets the two arranged together and you have a central region okay there are central microtubule here you can see two microtubules they are not doublets they are just singlets okay central microtubules you have singlets two are there one two okay so this entire axis like uh, this is a cross section like if you take a cross section this is if this is a cilia okay this is simply the cilia and i am taking a cross section that cross section is what you can see like this okay and the microtubules the arrangement of microtubules is like this and this is a diagrammatic representation so the microtubules this group of microtubules they are actually covered with a plasma membrane okay and you have two sets of microtubules there is peripheral microtubules and central microtubule the entire thing this forms the main axis of this cilium and this entire axis the central thing we call it as axonem the core of this cilia or flagella we call it as axonem this entire structure is called axonem okay so in the axonem like towards the outer side you have nine microtubules arranged as doublets okay we can say nine pair yes and you have a central microtubule okay all these tubules they are actually parallelly arranged if this is a microtubule okay this is another microtubule so this is actually the top view if you you view from here okay like you have a they are parallelly arranged okay they have a parallel arrangement got it they have a parallel arrangement of this uh, tube tubules so this is the top view if you view from the top like this from the top if you view you can see like this actually they are 
long tubules down downwards you have tubular things that is the microtubules only so how was this arrangement you have nine peripheral microtubules and there is a central microtubule and they have connections okay they have connection see there is an bridge this is a bridge between two doublets so we call it as inter doublet bridge and here also you have another bridge between the central microtubule okay central microtubule has got also has also got this bridge and see there is a sheath which covers this central microtubule a, a covering okay and that covering we call it as central sheath that is a central sheath so the central microtubules and the peripheral microtubules are separated by a sheath a central sheath okay yes and all the peripheral microtubules they have a a connection okay a small connection that is actually called spokes see all this all microtubules peripherally arranged microtubules they have a a spoke arising towards this sheath right that is called radial spoke okay not from both the microtubules only from one microtubule a spoke arises okay yes so this arrangement of this microtubules you can see nine peripheral microtubules and there are two microtubules at the center we call it as 9 plus 2 arrangement okay so the arrangement of axonemal microtubules it is 9 plus 2 arrangement okay so here in cilia you have two sets of microtubules the peripheral microtubules which are doublets and the central microtubule which is singlet okay two are there while the peripheral ones you have nine nine pairs okay yes so we actually saw the central the central tubules they are connected okay the connection is there there is a central sheath which covers the central microtubule okay and radial spokes arise from this peripheral microtubules to the sheath okay and also this peripheral microtubules are also connected by inter doublet bridge yes and the cilium and flagella okay so this is the internal structure of cilia and flagella which is actually made up of microtubules and microtubules are made up of tubulin protein okay so the cilia and flagella they emerge from a basal body okay basal body is like we say our hairs come from a hair follicle see if this is the follicle and from here you have the hair coming hair strand this is the follicle okay in the same way our cilia and flagella arise from a basal body and that basal body is actually a modified centriole okay so just remember this basal body from which our cilia and flagella arises it's actually a modified centriole that means you know centriole right centriole it's a structure which helps in this cell division and all from which spindle fibers arise okay we'll see that in detail so centriole uh, along with proteins it forms the basal bodies and it is from this basal body are what arises cilia and flagella arise okay so basal body is nothing but it is a association of centriole and proteins again tell me what with uh, which protein the centriole is made up of or uh, what is actually centriole made up of yes so centriole we have seen it is actually made up of microtubules only okay so microtubules is made up of tubulin protein so when we discussed the differentiation between microfilament and microtubule microtubule is hollow microfilament is solid microtubule is made up of tubulin protein microfilament is made up of actin and myosin proteins and microtubules we found we find them in the centrioles basal bodies cilia flagella okay an axonym of sperm tail so in all these places you can see this microtubules 
So, here we found this microtubules in cilia flagella. So, this is the arrangement of microtubules in cilia and flagella. In centrioles, it is made up of microtubules only, but there is a different arrangement. And in basal body, you have basal body, again it is made up of microtubules. Actually, this basal body is a combination, like it is formed of my, uh, this, uh, centrioles and proteins. Okay, so basal bodies we can say they are modified, modified centrioles because centrioles when they are associated with proteins, they form basal bodies. And what is actually the function of basal body? It forms the follicle like structure from which the cilia and flagella arise. That's it. I hope it is clear. Yes. Next, we shall see centrosome and centrioles. Centrosome and centrioles. Okay, these are related structures. Centrosome, it's a cell organelle which you can see only in animals. When we differentiated plant and animal cell, we have mentioned that centrosome, it's a cell organelle which you can see only in animal cell. Okay, it is absent in plant cell. Okay, so this centrosome, see. This is the structure of centrosome. It is again made up of microtubules only. And inside the centrosome, you have two cylindrical structures like this. Can you see? Two cylindrical structures inside this centrosome. Okay? And those cylindrical structures, we call it as centrioles. So, centrosome and centrioles, they are associated. Centrosome is a cent uh, cell organelle. And inside the cell organ, inside the cell organ, centrosome, you have two cylindrical structures that is centrioles. Okay. And see this two cylindrical structures that's uh, centrioles, they are actually uh, surrounded by, okay, they have a protein rich environment. Okay, they are in a protein rich environment. They that is actually the pericentriolar material. Okay, we, we give a short form for this PCM, pericentriolar material, that's proteins only, okay. So, proteins you can see around the centrioles. So, centrosome, inside the centrosome you have two centrioles arranged perpendicularly, okay. So, if one centrosome is like this, another centrosome would be like this. So, perpendicular arrang arrangement. And the centrioles, okay, uh, sorry, if one centriole is like this, another centriole would be like this, perpendicular. And the centrioles, they are surrounded by pericentriolar material, that is simply proteins. So, we can say the centrosome, it is composed of centrioles and the pericentriolar materials, okay, yes. So, when they are arranged in this perpendicular manner, they actually form like a cartwheel. You have seen cartwheel, no? See, they have a cartwheel like appearance. Yes. And the centrioles, they are actually made up of what? We have seen centrioles are made up of microtubules. Okay, they are made up of microtubules, but they have a different arrangement. Uh, it, the arrangement is actually different from that of the cilia and flagella. In cilia and flagella, you have this 9 plus 2 array arrangement, right? But here, the arrangement is different. See, can you see this? These are the microtubules, okay? The microtubules, there is a different kind of arrangement, okay? Yes. So, this is actually the arrangement of microtubules in a centriole. Got it? So, we can say this entire structure, this is just the top view. Hmm? So, the entire structure, this can be a centriole, okay, got it. Yes. So, now let us see how these microtubules within the centrioles they are arranged. Here 
you can see nine evenly spaced peripheral fibrils of tubulin protein. You know microtubules are made up of tubulin protein, right? Microtubules, see these are the microtubules, okay, it's just made up of tubulin protein, tubulin protein, yes. So, here there is at the like outer region you have microtubules arranged and there are nine, okay, nine, uh, yes, nine tubules there, okay, yes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9, okay. So, 9 fibrils are there, okay. And this 9 fibrils, here they are triplets, okay. Here they are triplets, this peripheral uh, microtubules, here this triplet, while in cilian flagella that was doublet, okay. Towards the periphery you had two microtubules, here it is three microtubules, okay. And all this triplets are linked, see all this triplets, so this is a triplet, okay. When three microtubules are there, we call it as triplet. So, the peripheral microtubules, they are triplets and they are connected, they are connected by AC linker, that is again a protein bridge, okay. We can say that is a protein bridge. AC linker, it is a protein bridge, yes. So, AC linker is a protein bridge and at the central you have a, a central region, it is protein rich region, okay and that we call it as central hub, okay. There is a central proteinaceous region called central hub and from this peripheral microtubules, you have radial spokes arising, okay, radial spokes arising from this peripheral microtubules and connecting to the central hub. So, both cilia, the microtubular arrangement of cilia and that of centriole, it is quite different, right? Yes. So, both are actually made up of microtubules, microtubules which are formed of tubulin protein, but the arrangement in this cilia flagella and in the centrioles are different, okay, yes. So, the central part of the proximal region of the centriole is a proteinaceous, that means it is protein rich, so that is called central hub, so this is protein rich, protein rich central hub is there and you have tubules arising, see from this protein hub, there are connections to this peripheral microtubules that is called a radial spoke. Even in cilia and flagella, you have this radial spoke, right? Yes, here also you have the radial spoke, okay? See, radial spoke, it is actually in the, it forms a radius of this circular thing, right? That is why it is called radial spoke, okay? Yes. So, you have radial spokes. Radial spokes are also made up of protein. So, the entire structure is proteinaceous, okay? Yes. And the centrioles, what are the functions of centrioles? Previously, we discussed cilia and flagella, they are formed from basal body. Basal body, they are formed by the combination of the centriole and protein. So, one function of centriole is the formation of basal body. So, they form basal body of cilia or flagella, then they form the spindle fibers. This is a very known term to you, right? Spindle fibers. Spindle fibers, they are associated with cell division, okay. Uh, during cell division, when uh, you have the chromosomes separating, sister chromatids separating, the centrioles, you know, they go to the opposite poles and they give rise, they uh, produce the spindle fibers to connect with the chromatids, they separate them. So, spindle fibers are fibers arising from this centrioles, okay, and they help in cell division. So, that is another function of centriole, okay, thereby the centriole helps in cell division, animal cell, remember centrioles are the centrosome, you can see only in animal cell, okay. 
So, spindle fibers they are formed during the cell division in animal cell. So, now I hope the cytoskeleton, cilia and flagella, and centrosome and centriole, it's paka clear to you, right? Because all those things are associated, connected, like cytoskeleton, you have microtubules, microfilaments, those are made up of proteins. Cilia flagella, they are made up of microtubules. Even the centrioles, they are made up of microtubules. Remember, the arrangement of microtubules is different. Okay? Yes. So, I hope it is clear to you. So, we will wind up. Thank you.